This morning, we are following three shootings in Colorado that have left seven people dead in the past two days. The first one happened in Custer County, the second a possible road rage shooting in Wheat Ridge, and the third a shooting at a home in Adams County. In that shooting, four people are dead, including the suspect. Now deputies are trying to figure out what led up to this. So this all happened at a home near Thornton. Uh, deputies say that they think it started as some kind of fight between family. The sheriff's office says that they got a call that someone was shot at this home yesterday afternoon. And when crews got inside, they found four men dead. They say all of them had been shot. The sheriff's office says that three of the victims are men around their 70s or 80s. The fourth man, the suspe suspected shooter, is believed to be in his 40s or 50s. The sheriff's office says they believe at least two of the victims may have been related. The sheriff's office and coroner are still investigating what led up to the shooting though. Right now, police in Wheat Ridge are looking for a driver who shot at another car in the middle of the road. It happened near 44th and Youngfield yesterday. Police say a man in a dark sedan fired into another car, but haven't said much else about the suspect. They say it's possible this was road rage. The bullet didn't hit anyone, but one person ended up hurt when a window shattered. Three people are dead in Custer County after a long running property dispute. This led to a massive day long manhunt before police arrested Hanmi Clark in New Mexico. Clark lives right here, right next to Rob Gears and Beth Wade, two of the people who died that night. There is a road that goes through Clark's property. Well, last year, a judge said that Clark could not block neighbors from using it. One of those neighbors, Hartwig Kinsley, told Nine News Clark wasn't happy about that decision. Kinsley filed a motion less than a month ago saying Clark refused to move the gates. Kinsley says that's why Rob and Beth hired a surveyor to come out on Monday. The other two people shot stopped by Rob and Beth's property, knowing that the surveyor would be there. The affidavit says Clark ended up shooting all four of them and only one survived. The fight to keep Donald Trump off Colorado's primary ballot is heading to the state Supreme Court. The liberal group trying to use the 14th Amendment to block him from the ballot is appealing a lower court ruling, and so is the Trump team. Attorneys for a group of voters argue Trump can't hold public office because he engaged in an insurrection on January 6th. Last week, a judge in Denver decided Trump did engage in an insurrection, but said that part of the 14th Amendment doesn't apply to the president. Trump and his team want the higher court to knock down the insurrection part of that decision. What former President Trump is saying is there are lots of other reasons why I think I should win the case. And he's telling the Colorado Supreme Court that if you're going to consider one of these issues, you should consider all of them. That was appellate lawyer Christopher Jackson. He says other courts aren't bound by what the judge in Denver decided, but they might take it into consideration if similar cases pop up. The Colorado Supreme Court will hear arguments two weeks from today. Either way, it is likely this case will go all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Well, for the first time since October 7th, Israel and Hamas have agreed to pause fighting. Israel will stop its ground and airstrikes for four days, and in exchange, Hamas will release at least 50 hostages. Right now, there are nearly 250 hostages in Gaza. Hamas is only releasing women and children as part of this deal. The mass abductions happened in October when Hamas snuck across the border and killed around 1,200 people. Israel responded by launching air and ground assaults. Since then, the Gaza Health Ministry says more than 14,000 people have been killed. The agreement will also allow humanitarian aid into Gaza during the pause in fighting. That pause has not yet started. We should find out when it's happening in the next day. It's 6.05 right now, and President Biden is turning his attention to stopping fentanyl from getting into the U.S. In the past week, President Biden has held meetings with the leaders of Mexico and China. Yesterday, he called those conversations a step toward progress in keeping fentanyl from crossing the border. But he says there's a lot more that needs to be done. Congress also has to step up in this fight. Start by passing my supplemental budget request for national security priorities, including, including significant resources help stop the flow of fentanyl into our country. Overdose deaths in the U.S. passed 100,000 for the first time in 2021. Synthetic opioids like fentanyl accounted for 75% of those deaths. Right now, Denver's STAR program has the capacity to respond to less than half the calls that are coming in. The program pairs behavioral health clinicians and paramedics to help people in a mental health crisis and facing substance use issues. Our Anusha Roy is live outside of Denver City and County Building. And Anusha, how exactly is the city planning to address this problem? 
Yeah, Jordan and Corey, the numbers really tell a very interesting story here. So far this year, Star Program has specifically been tagged in about 13,000 calls so far, but they've only been able to respond to roughly 6,000. So we're talking like 40, 45 percent of the calls that are coming in. But here's the thing, right? So between this year's budget and the money that is promised next year, they should be able to start expanding to as many as 16 teams and more vans as well. They're hoping to eventually go 24 seven. But the problem is, is that they're having a lot of trouble hiring for these positions. Of course, there's the ongoing workforce shortage. And then there's a team that has a very intense job. There's a lot of turnover. Competitive pay is an issue. And then the team was saying that even if they did expand to those numbers I just shared with you, it still wouldn't meet the full demand. So we hope to get up to close to like 60% of calls being responded to. Um, and then we can work on expanding further um, in, in the coming year. So in order to meet 100%, they would have to close to double the number of teams that they have. So next year from the city, Star will be getting around $2.3 million in additional funding. City Council had actually just discussed some budget amendments to add more money. We're talking a couple more million on top of that. That ended up not passing. Corey and Jordan, there were a whole bunch of issues that were discussed, but one of it was concerns about reallocating money from a different part of the city budget to go towards this program. Well, we have seen the success of this program, of course, when they have the proper number of resources to make sure that it's working just fine, Anusha. So we will follow it closely and see what happens. Thank you for your reporting. And one thing you want to know about the weather is what a difference a day is going to make. Look at the temperatures today in the 60s to near 70 degrees along the front range. Plenty of sunshine to go around. Tomorrow the clouds increase a lot colder with temperatures only in the 40s and only in the 20s for your Friday and Saturday. It's going to be a 